we've been using Ozempic for about uh, three years. Um, there are uh, a variety of these um, uh, incretins, okay, which are basically hormones, uh, if you will. They talk to the brain and they induce a satiety signal. That's what they do. There's Ozempic, there's Victoza, there's Saxenda, there's Wagovi, okay, um, there's Munjaro, all right? Everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. These and medications were originally and are still being used, but they're originally designed to treat type 2 diabetes, even though it's a very, very indirect way to type 2 diabetes. So this semaglutide, this liraglutide, these are glutides. They all have the same name. Um, the difference between something just, let's say, Saxenda and Wagovi, okay, and Victoza, Ozempic, and Munjaro is their half-life. So Saxenda and Wagovi are once a day, so they're daily injections. The other three are weekly. So same effect, different half-lives. That's really the only difference. Correct. At the end of the day, it goes back to our whole conversation, which is the weight loss is not coming from some sort of magic fat burning ability of the drug. It's simply helping them control their appetite and therefore their food intake. Yeah, and it is dramatic. So it would be like you having gone and eaten a full meal of whatever, and then somebody calls you up, and I think you and I were talking about this, and says, hey, Brett, you want to go and have some, uh, have some lunch or something like that? I go, no, I'm just not, I'm not hungry. Have a good lunch. Not, God, I'm, I'm just starving, but I can't do it because I'm on this dumb HCG diet, um, but I am starving, and it is painful for me. <laughs> and right? I want to so, eat. And I want to eat. So can you imagine having something that induced such a satiety signal where... You have no temptation. It's not even on your radar. It's scary how good the signaling is, but you can basically brainwash somebody with an injection. So this goes up and addresses that big layer right there, which is, hey, you're, we can put you in a deficit now. We can restrict the amount of food that you're right. intaking. Right. And you're not gonna really care. That's it. And you don't. That's well summarized. That's exactly what we do. Who is it for? Who is it not for? Or is it for everybody? potential. We put a lot of people on semaglutide. A lot. Um, the answer to your question is, is that if you have somebody, the soccer mom who, who needs to lose 15 pounds, yeah, we coach them up. We put them on the macronutrients that we want them to be eating. We do everything the same, okay? But we tell them, look, we can help you, okay? Let us ease the pain. Take a little bit of this. It may even be every other week, okay? And then the next thing you come, they come back and we talk to them in, in six months, oh. I'm down 25 pounds. Great. And the diabetics out there may be angry at me. Okay. You're using up my supply of drugs. I'm a diabetic. Fair enough. Okay, then we get it from a compounding pharmacy. You know, not to sound like an asshole, but I'm going to sound like an asshole here. I doubt it. Not anything the, the, worse the, than the, what I've said to my, my patients. Trust the, me. The irony of someone who's type 2 diabetic saying you're using up they do. the supply, it's one and the same. The person who is type 2 diabetic is lifestyle related and is weight related. You're prescribing it to someone who has a weight issue and probably is going to be either pre-diabetic or type two not, not Not 24 hours ago, somebody called me an asshole on Facebook because I said this, that. These two diseases have very, very, very similar underpinnings. I'm talking about obesity and type two diabetes. Right. Okay, she came back like two minutes later, she called me an asshole, okay, and you're, you're, totally, you're totally wrong, so you know what I wrote back to her? Thank you. I'm, I, I think I'll incorporate in, in that into my uh, practice of, of 25 plus years. You know, it, look, it, it's harsh, but it's not know, harsh. There, there's, there's a big it's difference not, it, between it, type 1 diabetes, you have no control it, over it, it, versus type 2 it's, diabetes, it's, which is almost always lifestyle related. It, 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 almost always, okay. And I've gotten, you know, uh, blasted on Facebook, not that I care, okay, you know, for saying similar things. The thing about it is that it's the same disease, folks, okay? You can argue with me. You can tell me I'm wrong. Um, it doesn't matter, okay? We're living proof of it, okay? My patients are living proof of it, okay? Period, end of discussion, okay? I'll debate that with any endocrinologist out there, and I am not an endocrinologist, okay? But I've been in this space for 45 years. A lot of people take it personal because it feels very personal to them. It feels like you're attacking them. It feels like passing on judgment. Hey, here's some nope. fit person who's judging me in nope. my weight, and nope. it's not judgment nope. at all. Uh, it, uh, it has nothing to do with weight. Zero. It is biology. That's it. It's science. That's it. It's medicine. And it's, it's about as personal as that.
that's it. It's not personal at all. I have no problem. People want to live their lives however they want to live their lives. Okay. But these are the physiologic consequences. Correct. This is a man-made disease, period. Okay. Type 2 diabetes, unless you're a Pima Indian. Okay. This is a man-made disease, period. Okay. Um, just like obesity is. You know, you just see a lack of accountability for one's actions. Correct. And these are just the consequences. You do this, this is the consequence. And there's nothing personal about it. And if you want to correct it, then you have to be honest about it. Someone like you has to be honest and say, look, it's not this, it's this. And if you want to make a change, you have to address this. If you want to live over here and make yourself feel better with your narrative, Right. Go ahead. Right. But it's not going to fix your situation. Correct. What the incretins do is they force compliance and accountability in an injection. That's really what they do. If you're not accountable to yourself, okay, or if you're not compliant with the regimen, it used to be a real problem. In other words, it was, imp it was impossible, right? Just like you said, that's number one, right? You couldn't do it. You couldn't be committed. You didn't have the grit. Now I have grit. Okay, and an injection. And people that have struggled, James, I mean, for years, okay, with the program here, it's hard for them, it's hard for them, it's hard for them. They can't not drink. Now, they come back after we put them on the drug and a year later, they're down 50, 60, 70 pounds. And here's the interesting thing, and I had just mentioned it. The incretins also change your thirst and your appetite for alcohol. So we get people that come here and I, I just can't stop. I have to have my two drinks a night. They come back and they go, holy shit. They call me and they go, Brett, uh, I don't know what you did. I don't know what this medication's doing. Now I have a drink or two a week. I go, right. I go, M of course, my first question is, is, is that a bad thing? And then there's always the crickets on the phone, right? So we know what the benefit is, very clear benefit. What are some of the potential risks? Sure. There are cases of this person got pancreatitis from it. That's one of the sort of the rare side effects yeah. of it. Um, you hear people getting cholecystitis, so inflammation of the gallbladder from it. Rare, not happen, knock on wood, to any of my patients. Most commonly, what we see here in the clinic um, is nausea. And that is the most common side effect from Ozempic. Why? Because it slows and delays gastric emptying yeah. significantly, which is, which, one is, which is the benefit because it makes you feel full longer. Correct. Ex so exactly. Two That's, sides of the coin. Exactly. So when people call and they say, oh, I have nausea, you know what I usually tell them? If I happen to speak to them, it's typically Lauren, my nurse practitioner. I usually tell them, you're good. It's working. Be thankful. You're sensitive to it. We always tell them, you're probably going to get nauseous. That's good if you do. Okay. Particularly at low doses, that means you're sensitive to it. And that means that we just dial them back. And then the nausea goes away. And then we slowly, slowly escalate based upon satiety. So the conversation is, is, you know, is your appetite tempered? Okay. Are you suppressed? No, no problem. Go up. Are you suppressed? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. You know, I, I'm eating, you know, 10 or 20% less. Okay, good. Stay there. So I didn't know anything about uh, these drugs until you mentioned it mm -hmm. on my last visit. So I went and I looked it up. First thing that I saw, because of course I'm going to look, what are some of the risks? So the first thing that I saw pop up a lot was with some of the original rodent studies with tumors. Okay. Any risk there for no. humans? So per my knowledge, okay, and I've scoured the literature, I know of no human data to suggest that it's oncogenic cancer causing or that any tumors have popped up in humans, medullary or in those that have um, MEN1. Okay, I know of none. Well, whatever risk there is, potentially, let's just say there is some potential risk at some level mm -hmm. by taking this, yep. probably very small in comparison to the very real risk associated with obesity. Going down it, the list of cardiovascular disease, James, diabetes. It, these things are not even in the same ballpark, right? Obesity and inflammation, okay, is the underpinning. Hyperinsulinemia, okay, is the underpinning and the associated hypertension, okay, um, that often occurs. These are the underpinnings to all of these diseases. All of these diseases. Look at these, look at these new synolytic agents, right? These agents that are being used to potentially slow the aging process. What are they targeting? Inflammation, okay? They're anti-inflammatories, okay? 
Obesity is an inflammatory disease. Cancer is an inflammatory disease. Type 2 diabetes, inflammatory disease. Alzheimer's disease, hypertension, atherosclerotic disease, these are all inflammatory diseases, period. There's this energy mismatch, okay? We're exercising too little and we just can't shut our mouths. Okay, so now what I've done here, no, come on. It's true. It's true. Okay, so now we used to have two problems in the clinic, right? Two problems with humanness, right? They're lazy and they eat too much. Okay, energy in, energy out sort of problem, right? But what happens now if we had a medication that could bring you down there, okay? So now that big delta is not there anymore. Now we can match their laziness, okay, with putting in less food. Now you tell them, listen, I want you to just walk every day. Forget about coming in here and doing, you know, the James style high intensity workout or what I do. It's not going to happen, right? Now get them walking a little bit. Oh, now they're starting to lose a little bit weight. Now they're starting to lose a little bit more weight. People are saying, like James said, oh, you look great. Oh, that's amazing. What are you doing? Then the next thing you know, that person is back in the gym and they're back in the gym and they're back in the gym and they're back in the gym, and they're gonna to continue to create a nice deficit, and they're gonna to, going to continue to lose weight, and maybe even pack on some muscle. And that's a self-perpetuating cycle. So this medication, right, is truly, truly um, as close to the holy grail of weight loss as we can, because it forces compliance and it forces accountability in the context of their eating, which was one of those two huge problems that we combat in this clinic by virtue of people being human. You know, it's just true. You know what I don't like about it? If I were to be really honest about it. I know what you're going to say. Do you? I know exactly what you're going to say. You're going to say, here's, here's my, my prediction. Let's okay. see if he gets it. You're going to say, okay, two things. One, it allows people to almost eat what they want because they're going to be eating less bad food or they're going to convince themselves that by virtue of dialing up their medication dosage and suppressing their appetite further, they don't need to exercise. It's one of those two, because I have similar issues. I'm going to throw you off. I'm going to say even different than those. I've dedicated my life to fitness. I've worked out for 32 years, hard for 32 years. I've been dedicated with my yep. nutrition. Likewise. For almost the same period of right. time. In other words, I've worked my ass off. I've sucked it up. I've gone through the miserable diets. Yep. I've right. gone through the miserable workouts over and over right. and over. Likewise. And now all of a sudden, at least on the nutrition side, it levels the playing field where someone doesn't have to have my level of commitment and discipline and grit in order to get the same result. Okay. And actually that's a great thing, you know, for someone who doesn't want to do that and they want to look great. Right. I'm just saying on you know personal level, right. it's like, I get oh it. man, I sacrificed right. all those years, you should right. suffer too. Right. <laughs> but the reality right. is most people don't want to do that. They, they just don't, James. You know, we have a very, very, very significant, and it's not just here, you know, this is a global health problem, right? This is a pandemic. Yeah. I mean, obesity, right? I mean, it truly is. And you know what, if it takes some sort of um, medication, drug, whatever you want to call it, you know, to help us solve this problem, that's probably what it's going to look like. And it's probably not going to be by virtue of somebody's grit, hard work ethic, um, you know, work ethic that we're going to be able to solve that problem. I just don't think it's going to happen, both from the standpoint of the physicality and or um, their ability to shut their mouths. They just can't do it. And again, I'm not speaking because I read this in a book. You live Go in my clinic, yeah. right? This is just reality, right? And there's some soft anecdotal data right now that if you're on the drug for more than 18 months, it actually rewires you. I'll call it rewires your brain. Entrains your brain even off the medication to eat less, which is very interesting. So that is neuroplasticity at the level of the, at this, you know, this hypothalamic circuitry, right? The satiety circuitry that's going on, this entero-hypothalamic, you know, sort of circuitry that's going on. There's some plasticity there, and that is fascinating.